Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much to be um, here this morning. It's a real pleasure to, uh, to welcome you for this uh, second edition of a, a pitch station of the uh, cinema and transmedia project we are selecting and uh, recruiting uh, together with uh, Next and the, um, the Cannes Film, uh, Le Marché du Film. And uh, we're very proud that uh, we'll present you uh, five uh, beautiful projects that we'll be pitching in front of you. I just wanted first to um, introduce a little bit um, the project we are, we are leading uh, in Paris called Cross Video Days. Um, will be um, held in, uh, on 11th and 12th of June in Paris. And um, it's a market. It's a market dedicated to uh, digital content. Um, and it became in, uh, in six years uh, uh, one of the biggest in Europe. Um, so a place where you can uh, uh, understand the trends, uh, find uh, producers, meet uh, media that are um, looking for digital, multi-platform, interactive, uh, whatever would be on, uh, on the web, on mobile, and on different screens. Uh, here are um, some logos of people that were together with us uh, last year. And um, we are very proud to have this diversity of um, media coming from, uh, obviously, uh, movie industry, but uh, TV, web, um, brands, communication, and a lot of different ones. This is the, uh, the, the kind of population we're having. We definitely uh, focus on uh, content. What we call content is producers, authors, and people who are creating or producing. This is very important for us. And um, also diversity of countries with 28 countries that are represented and uh, were there last year. And this is for uh, this year program. Uh, so we will be talking about um, uh, different topics. Um, the, uh, first of all, our grandmaster, and we are very honored um, he, he will be here uh, this year uh, with us, is um, David Dufresne. Um, maybe, um, uh, I hope most of you uh, know, know him, is um, a great author of um, interactive transmedia. Um, he's French, he's living in the States or in Canada, and he's very, very creative. You, maybe you have seen uh, Faux MacMoney lately, but he has made a lot of different uh, creations. So he will, will um, make the pleasure to be uh, here in Paris. Uh, in June, and we will be talking about different topics. First of all, um, about VR, so virtual reality, and um, having a very um, uh, creative Thomas Walner who made a pole, no, uh, pole North, North Pole, yeah, North Pole, uh, which is a great uh, uh, support and co produced by Arte, if I'm not wrong, and uh, it's about um, a huge experience on, uh, on uh, virtual reality about discovering. Uh, an expedition in the North Pole. We will have also Noni de la Peña, uh, an American, very creative and innovative in the, in the VR experience too. Um, this is a real new frontier and we want to, uh, we want to be um, studying and exploring this, uh, this uh, dimension. Uh, we'll talk about uh, international co-production uh, with um, Upion, um, a, a famous French um, production company. They will uh, make a case study about Do Not Track um, and, and a lot of other people talking about, uh, about this opportunity. How do we make a, a co-production um, uh, on, on a digital multi-platform content with different countries? Uh, we'll talk about audience engagement. This is um, a topic we have every year and this is, I think, one, one of the most important we need to talk all together because digital is engagement. So how, how do we engage the audience? How do we um, um, create the dynamic with the audience to make them come, watch, active, react and participate to uh, the creation we are proposing here? Monetization and business models. Trying to find some very creative and innovative um, companies um, inventing after the, um, the the simple production, inventing way to um, um, monetize, to make money, and to create value uh, around the uh, the creation they're proposing. Um, and to conclude, we'll have very uh, high level funds, uh, international funds that will be uh, there to explain um, how they can support uh, your productions. 
Um, so there will be uh, the uh, the French Film Commission, the CNC, that will be um, that will be there. Uh, will be uh, Pro Helvetia, uh, so from Switzerland, uh, that support too. There will be the uh, Canadian uh, Media Fund, um, that will be there too. And there will be Wall Image from Belgium, and they will all explain what is their strategy, what are the opportunities, and how they will support uh, producers in this new way of. Uh, producing and creating. This is some um, of the um, uh, glorious people that will be uh, there during those two days. And um, w w one of our characteristics is um, our ability to have uh, developed a, a call for project all over the world. Um, the um, 2015 edition has uh, bring um, some good results. We receive 300 and 78 projects from 51 countries. Um, those um, th those countries, as you can see, are uh, very much European, but also uh, North American and South American. And, and we are uh, targeting to have a very large diversity of format. Here we're talking about cinema and transmedia, but we also have web series, web fiction, um, we have animation, we have educational, uh, we have... Um, uh, youth content and also for TV and we're trying to be uh, as transversal as possible because the question of digital content is regarding um, any kind of audiovisual creation. Yeah. Uh, so during the content market which is the uh, the hood of the of the event we are um, receiving 64 projects selecting from the call for project uh, that we are welcoming and we organize some face-to-face -face meeting with um, a, a large number of uh, a diverse and diversity of commissioners. This is very important for us uh, to um, have a representation of a diversity, people that are uh, today investing, co-producing, um, in um, and buying in terms of digital. So we have a lot of TV channels from all over Europe. We have brands like Red Bull, that will be uh, here with uh, free people looking for projects, looking for content. And, um, and we have a lot of different uh, um, style with the radio, with press, and with, uh, with TV, obviously. This is our partner on the content market. We are very proud and, and uh, very proud to be here and welcome for the second year. Thank you, Clara. Uh, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, this partnership with the, the Cannes Film Market, it's really an honor for us. And we have also partnership with the MIFA, with Film Interactive, which is a beautiful event in Poland. Uh, the financing forum for kids content in Malmö, Sweden. Uh, IDOC, which is um, um, a, a very good uh, workshop in Switzerland. And uh, Power to the Pixel that uh, a lot of you uh, know, which is in London. So this is the most complex slide I have to explain to you, but just some figures. Uh, is, um, so we, um, we, we select um, 63 projects, a uh, few from partners, most of them from the Core for project, and then we organize those meetings, one-to-one -one meetings of half an hour, 500 meetings in two days. So a real opportunity to make business, and to, um, we have between 30 and 50% of the projects going through cross video days that have been uh, produced and uh, that have been on air at the end. And this is the last part which uh, we are the, the most proud about it. Um, it's um, our ability from the cross video days to disseminate and, um, and make uh, those projects travel all over the world. So um, it's a good market also for other events to uh, come and to select projects that they will uh, present in their market. So this is a, we're very proud of that. And I think it's time for me to stop speaking and to start for uh, what, what, what you, you, why you came here this morning. And I'm really very proud. We have five beautiful projects um, talking about cinema and transmedia. The um, characteristic of this selection we made with the uh, Marché du Film is uh, we wanted projects that are fiction, that are future film dedicated to a movie theater, having a transmedia structure around that is not only communication but giving value uh, to the um, to the um, the creation and the film. 
This was very important. And uh, we're going to start with the first one, if you may. And I'm very proud to welcome Pierre Catan from Small Bang, that he will come to speak and present you Morphosis. Thank you, Bruno. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very proud to present you for the first time in Europe, Morphosis, uh, which is a um, um, current uh, project that we are producing now. It will be released for free on both uh, uh, Google and, and, and Apple Store uh, in next October. Morphosis is um, an app for tablet and phablet that will be a companion for the next uh, Jacques Perrin and Jacques Clouseau feature film, which uh, is the following of oceans and um, the winged migration. I think that you, you already know those wonderful naturalistic movies. So uh, The Seasons is, um, uh, yes, The season will tell the story in a very beautiful opera uh, will tell the story of the relationship between uh, mankind and, and wildlife since the Ice Age until today. But when you will watch the movie, uh, before or after, you could experience, you will be able to experience for free uh, this uh, Morphosis application. And we will um, tell the story of the landscape. How do we tell the story uh, of the landscape? Uh, um, from the Ice Age until today, we will mix three different languages. The video game, uh, interactive and motion design uh, languages, and we will uh, uh, try to uh, separate uh, the story of the landscape in 24 steps, and we will have an interface, a graphic interface, as you can see there, with uh, a total white uh, uh, winter landscape in the Ice Age until uh, the landscape as we know it today in Europe. So we will understand that this landscape is a construction, the fruit of a story, a very long story that we decided as, uh, uh, as a species. Um, and you will have uh, 24 episodes that will be interactive and that will tell the main and the most important uh, steps of this construction. And, and, and we will be very, we, we are working with the screenwriter of uh, Jacques Perrin. Uh, so the same screenwriter, screenwriter work on the feature film and with us to, pr to produce and to tell the story of uh, the app. And uh, we will enhance uh, uh, and underline the emotional relationship that we can uh, build uh, with the wildlife. And um, if yes, and in the in the application, it will be absolutely uh, um, a storytelling application. So we will explain some something, but we will be story centric, story first um, on the web. Uh, you will find a unique website for the, old, for the movie and the app and the books and everything about and around the universe of the seasons that we will, uh, um, um, that we will produce in Small Bang. And you, you will find a lot of uh, materials and sources that you can find on the internet if you want to go deeper uh, in this uh, natural travel and natural journey. So from... Uh, articles to TED Talks to free games and DIY workshop and, and, and participatory experiment, uh, you, 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 you will be able to go further and further in, in this experience. And uh, we want this app to be absolutely uh, used for uh, uh, educational purposes. Uh, and we are working with uh, France Television and Vigie Nature uh, to bring the application, which is free, I repeat, to bring the application for the scholar groups, uh, and and we will uh, we are working on on a distribution for the France uh, for uh, for the French um, schools 
with like working with 70,000 um, teachers. Uh, so uh, our partners uh, from the beginning are CNC, the French Public um, um, Fund Riser, yeah, Film Commission, thank you, uh, which uh, uh, supported us for, since the, the, the develop, um, development um, uh, phase of the project, and uh, new, uh, France Television uh, and its uh, digital interactive uh, department is supporting and co-producing the, the, the application, and France Television has, of course, supported the feature film, too. Uh, and we have, uh, so far, we have uh, 260K euro uh, to produce uh, the application and the website. And we are still looking for 100K euros. And um, there is um, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to, to come in the project of the, uh, the seasons. Uh, which would be at the end of the year, in December, um, more or less in the same um, moment of the COP, the climate summit in Paris, and the movie will be released in this exact moment. And um, I think that it could be a great opportunity for new partners to come in, in the project. Uh, I want to thank you a lot, and maybe to show you um, um, a little... Teaser, okay? You, you will watch for one episode, the prototype, and what is this interactive storytelling we are trying to, to do. Can we have the, the teaser, please, Ellie? OK. Just a moment, please. With factories closing down, the birch tree turned white again. of the movie. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> and play! <laughs> okay. The pepper moth is a terrific example of a species' ability to adapt. In the mid-19th century, the industrial era was in full swing, using more and more coal to run the factories. Covered in thick black smoke, cities expanded rapidly to accommodate the influx of new workers from the countryside. Soot seeped everywhere. Even the white bark of the birch tree gradually took on the dark color of factory chimneys. The life of the peppered moth, a small nocturnal moth that hides itself on the trunk of the birch tree during the day, would be turned upside down. Its white wings against the birch tree's black trunk attracted predators. So the number of white moths fell sharply, while the rare black moths discovered the benefits of camouflage. The mutant gene spread, and black became the norm. However, 
public safety measures enacted in the 50s against pollution would once again reverse the trend. With factories closing down, the birch tree turned white again. The white mold became predominant again and the mutation subsided. In barely a century, humans twice modified the habits of a little mod, whose survival mainly depends on the art of camouflage. Um, thank you very much, Pierre. Um, maybe if you want, the idea is a five-minute pitch. It's been a bit longer, but it was so, so exciting. And now you can have some questions from the audience uh, to Pierre and to his project to, to know better what, um, what the story and where, where, where is it going. There are some questions. There, there will be a microphone going, uh, going uh, through. Maybe, yeah, please. Thank you very much. Do you already know in uh, which languages it will be available? Oh, yeah, um, in French and English. And in, I think that we can... We, we are trying to uh, bring the application in the same territories of the movie. So there will be l localization effort, I think. But at the very beginning, French and English. You say you say you're still looking for one hundred thousand dollars, but euros. Euros. Sorry, apologies. No, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but what does that investment entails? Meaning, is there any hope for recruitment? It is a free application, so yes, it's only advertising that the it's investor gets. It's not advertising. Tell me, it's not advertising. Um, it's part of a bigger experience, which. Uh, um, can begin with a 30 million euros movie, feature length movie. So for a new partner, it's an opportunity to go inside this old universe of Jacques, Jacques Perrin, The Seasons, that will be released in the, the, um, dozens of countries, worldly. And this application, it's not an advertising, it's not a promotional content, it's and, and it's uh, like, you know, bringing this, the universe of the movie uh, in the tablet and for the entertainment of the audience, but not only the entertainment of the audience, it's part of an experience that we are designing from a movie theater to um, um, an active way to be conscious about the global warming and how we can uh, build and rebuild a new relationship with, with um, uh, wildlife. And I think that the fact that Jacques Perrin and his team wanted and accepted uh, this application is because they want their film and their movie to be more than a movie. And I think in the heart of the audience, they are already more than a movie. But uh, they, um, those are tools to enlarge this universe and the values of, of the movies. So uh, 100K is a very small participation in a very bigger story, I think, for, for a partner. Wh one more question. I noticed that the narrator had a French accent. No, it's a Lithuanian accent. OK. Apologies again. OK. Anyway, are you planning to have the English version with an accent? <laughs> No, 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 the English version. This is a prototype, so we did it. On Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but it was better her instead of me, for sure. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you have a good accent. OK, thank you. Um, uh, last question, please. Um, what is impressive in, and seems to be a first shot is that the fact is that the app is pushed by uh, Google and Apple, but also 
throughout the teachers mm -hmm. and the 70,000 teachers, which is really an opportunity for other territories to work through teachers and, and push the app to the children at home and their families. How did you succeed to work with the uh, with, uh, educational ministry and support? Because I, I think that we, it was a combination of a lot of positive uh, uh, factors. First of all, it's uh, a climate year with the, the, the summit at the end of the year in Paris. And I think that every media, every brand is focusing on this very big event for the, for the species and for the planet. Uh, so I think that it was a good year to make this kind of, um, um, th this kind of content. And I have to say that for independent producers, uh, going and bringing application in, in Google and Apple uh, stores, it's very, very difficult because you are absolutely lost in the multitude of, uh, of what the stores are full of. They are full of application. And it's not like, you know, the old um, um, way to sell something. There is one front page pushing a few applications and hundreds of thousand applications lost in the anonymate, anonymate of the stores. So this way for us is absolutely uh, the unique way to bring this free application to, 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 to the people through scholar, uh, um, um, through the scholar community. And we, w oh, sorry, yeah, shorter. And it's thanks, thanks to the big promotional uh, um, um, of Pate and, you know, Vigie Nature and France Television. It's a lot of big partners. They help us a lot. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very Thank much, you. Pierre. Good luck. Thank Thanks a lot. So to follow up, uh, we're going to welcome um, an Armenian and Swedish co-production presented by, um, I do my best, I promise, Asmik Vanisian from HY Pictures, Armenia, and Emin Emir. <laughs> I don't try even the name. Uh, director of the film, please welcome. Thank you, Bruno. You actually did very well with the names. Good morning, everyone. And I will ask you to comfortably lean back in your seats because we are going to a journey to the world of magic and music called Nola Land. And here you are going to meet our main characters, 16-year-old Nola, who is a very brave and rebellious girl, and her friends who founded a rock band called Aparaj, which means stone or rock. And together they are going to face a lot of supernatural adventures and challenges, though their problems are typical problems that every teenager has in their lives, but to a teenager it always seems supernatural and huge. And they will have to overcome them with their own strength and powers and whatever they have weaknesses, they will need their friends to help and the audience and users to come to their help, to, to help them. And though, the, as I said, the adventures are going to be supernatural, the setting of Nola Land is very real. Nola Land exists in our world and in our times where in every corner of the world there are conflicts, there are revolutions, there are rebellions, there are there is corruption, and we believe that our kids, the teenagers of Nola Land, and their viewers and users are the solution. They are the voice of tomorrow to bring a change. And to engage them in the story, we have, uh, apart from our feature film, A Song for Nola, we have web series of graphic novels, we have mobile games, we have music camp, the participants of which will create the music for a barrage band. So the band will have hundreds and hopefully thousands authors and their voice will be heard. And, to get, and there is a lot of uh, gamification, of course, to make the participation more exciting and also to help us build Nola Land as a teenage brand which aims to encourage and inspire kids. And as the uh, film A Song for Nola is our main platform, I will ask Emil, the director, to speak about the film. Hello, bonjour. It's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> I will start with a quote from one of my favorite uh, French directors. Robert Preson, he said, 
make visible what without you may perhaps never have been seen. So, um, we have uh, some uniqueness in our project, and uh, mainly it's Nola. She has a special gift. She can visual other people's auras and energies. And soon she develop her uh, powers and she can also influence uh, their thoughts. Um, her name is special, Nola. It means little warrior. And <clears throat> uh, what, I, what I like, what I love with Nola is that she's a hero that, no, she's, her flame makes other people becoming heroes. And uh, for two years ago, we was in Armenia and got uh, developed money for uh, this project. And we wanted to start shooting our actors and the landscape, which is also unique in um, nowadays cinema. So uh, we will show you a short teaser of Nola and we talk later. Teaser, please. summarize. So as we said, the film is an Armenian-Swedish co-production. We have post-production partners in Sweden and we are looking, uh, we're, we're here to actually fill the production gap so that we can green light the production for fall 2015. And since I mentioned about gamification, which is really important for engaging our audience, we have also, uh, and the, the important and the nice part of gamification is that you always get rewards. So we have small rewards for the first three questions from the audience. Good, so please ask your question for the reward. Yes? Yeah, somebody here. Well, I think on any project that's kind of in this audience, we're always interested in what the primary languages are going to be because if you're going to try to reach investors that are... It's going to be Armenian. Armenian. The film is going to be Armenian with English subtitles. The graphic novels will be bilingual uh, and on the website the users can choose which language they want to read it in. And we have already, for some of the uh, graphic novels, we have already arrangements to have translations and publication, for example, to translate it into Turkish language and to print it and, and release in Turkey. So we are also open for that as well. Hello. I was curious, um, how is the, the theme of the project? Uh, I was wondering, because it's probably not a classical writer, director um, and producer, so who else is on board and how many are you and how do you work for making this come true? Uh, we have written the story together. Uh, she will be producer, I'm director. Uh, my brother we is uh, DOP, we have a company together which is the co-production part in Sweden. We live in Sweden, born in Armenia. Um, we have the musicians on board. Uh, we have a German composer and a 
creating their own Armenian rock band. They will help, uh, they will be the tutors of the music camp and together with the kids compose the whole music for, for Aparaj. And we have our main characters. We have Nola and her boyfriend. So you saw them in the teaser. So all the main functions and uh, characters, uh, the cast is uh, already on board. Hi, can you briefly um, tell a little bit more about the digital storytelling aspects like graphic novels, games, and how do you finance it and if you have any gap because you were mentioning that you want to green light. Not sure if you're going to green light the film or the whole project. For the graphic novels, we have already green light. We are right now producing four series because we, we got funding from Galust Gulbenkian Foundation in Portugal. And we are making four separate stories, uh, which will be weekly updated on the website, starting from October 2015. Uh, the green light I mentioned is for the film, because for the continuity of the story, we need the film to be ready by a certain time when the four novels are going to, to come to an end, so that we have the, the movie, and then we continue with more novels, and then with the game and, and everything else. For the game, we have the, the whole project ready. We have the game team, but we do not have uh, financing for that. And we have made several applications for the music camp as well, but those two are coming after the film. So it's now uh, the first part in green, in green is green lit, and the second is waiting for that, hopefully. So we had already three questions. Could you give us the... Uh more tell rewards. us what is the reward. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. tell us what are the reward. At well, we, we actually reward. have also Nola's favorite candies, so we can invite someone for okay. coffee with the candies. Oh, Sweden. Good. Uh, some more candies? Some more questions? Um, I have a question. Um, what, how, how is it to, to manage uh, co-production between Armenia and, and Sweden? On a, on a based on a digital experience and a interactive uh, content? Well, uh, it started very naturally because when me and Emil, we met, he lives in Sweden, I live in Armenia. So in, in a way, okay. in, in a creative way, because our team is partly in Armenia and partly in Sweden, it became as a natural uh, co-production. And then we found also, we talked to Chimney in Sweden who will become the post-production partners. And uh, another aspect I, I think that makes it easy that I have also my educational background in Sweden. So we, uh, as a team, we understand each other pretty well. Oh, you used sense. to live in Sweden, you too. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Um, is there any, um, any other question? Do you, maybe do you, can you define practically what you looking being in Cannes and, and and maybe some opportunities will born from this uh, um, practical um, question or elements you will express? Yes, so uh, we have Armenia, we have Sweden. We still think, uh, there is a German composer, so we, we still think that we could uh, have another co-production side, another country on board of the film. We are very much interested in sales and distribution for the film. And when it comes to, to the digital content, we are looking for the graphic novels. Uh, it, when you have the novels produced, when you have the images ready, it is very easy to translate them to as many languages as needed because the text is very little there. So uh, we think that it could be a nice opportunity to to have uh, graphic novels released in different languages and of course we're we're looking for partners for for the mobile game okay so international sellers here they are thank you very much thank you so we're going to continue um with um, a beautiful project uh, from canada please welcome um, is uh, produced by La Maison de la Prod um, and is presented by the founder of La Maison de la Prod and uh, the uh, filmmaker Charles Stéphane Roy. Please, Charles Stéphane. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'd like to thank the Marché du Film and Cross Video Days for this great opportunity to introduce this project here in Cannes. 
So my name is Charles Stéphane Roy. I'm the producer writer of um, the VFC project. Uh, VFC is uh, cinema meets science, technology, and uh, digital art, interactive art. Um, this is one of my favorite albums. It's called uh, Fear of Music by Talking It. Uh, at first, everybody thought the title was silly or ironic, but actually, for some people, uh, listening to music can be a really scary experience because it triggers a uh, neurological reaction that they cannot control. And since music has invaded every part of our public and private life, it's an um, experience that they cannot escape from. They have to deal with it. So musical disorders have been studied for the past 40 years, and we want to take advantage of the science in place and put it on the screen in form of storytelling, but also in the room uh, for people watching the film. Um, so the VFC project has three main components, a feature film uh, designed for um, theatrical and VOD distribution, a two second screen app that you can, can be used and activated during the screening of the film, and an interactive fashion installation that you can experience before or after the film. Uh, so what's the film about? Uh, it's about a female neuroscientist who's dealing with people having musical disorders, suffering from musical disorders, and she's starting a new experimental treatment for herself after experiencing um, a form of musical Stendhal syndrome, which is basically hearing a certain piece of music in a certain context and collapsing, just like with painting. And uh, one of the people involved on the treatment is a young PhD candidate, and they start having, uh, they become lo lovers. Uh, and uh, he has a, a, another peculiar relationship with the same piece of music, and he's starting to act uh, erratically. And, um, and the neuroscientists uh, decide to just uh, run away from that situation, that environment. Um, the film is going to be uh, designed. Uh, from a uh, sound and music perspective is gonna really drive the narrative and it's three parts and it's gonna be three really distinctive uh, musical environment. And we're gonna build an app that people can use during the film and they're gonna record, monitor and record their emotional response toward the film soundtrack. Uh, and afterwards, you can, through the app, um, access their profile and see the uh, difference with other people's reaction as well. And uh, have access to actual tests uh, that are uh, being used by scientists in that field. The other uh, component is a uh, feature on the app is alternative and augmented soundtrack. So you, you, you can use it with your own set of headphones in the theater. And you can watch the same film, but with uh, an ants uh, sound uh, motive and uh, or completely alternative uh, soundtrack, which gives you a totally other film experience. The, the other component is um, interactive suit. <laughs> uh, it's a shape-shifting suit that reacts to sound. Uh, it's going to be used in the film as part of the story. It's going to be worn by the main actress. But also, is going to be, there's going to be an installative version that has a component piece to the film. So uh, you can uh, use it. So you watch the film, and in the hall, it is going to be like exhibited, and you can activate it with uh, your app. Uh, so in short, we see this as a strong statement at a possibility of uh, a future auteur cinema uh, when it's fully taking advantage of science and technology to give a deeper and more, more meaningful experience to the, uh, the audience. But in order to do that, this experience, this interactive experience, must be non-intrusive. I call this passive participation because if you're using your mobile app uh, during the film, you're ruining the whole experience, so it's not working. Uh, I'll also see that as a business opportunity because we can uh, format the film for distributors and theaters as a standalone piece, only the film, or uh, as a combo experience with a different pricing. So, five minutes? <laughs> okay, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Please, uh, if you have a 
Questions? I have some to start with. Um, so the, the, the very basic question is what, what are you looking for in Cannes today um, to the audience and to the, uh, to, to from the market? Um, we look, we're looking for co-production partners. Uh, I've been in the next pavilion last year and this year I know that there are a lot of, um, uh, of you say, um, countries that are really into that area such as France and Belgium and uh, Switzerland, etc. And we're looking for partners in these areas to co-produce this thing because they, under, they will fully understand um, the opportunity on film and transmedia as connected together. Uh, and we're also looking to cast uh, a main actress with international appeal. So that's our need. You, if, yeah, there's a question over there. Can you let us know a little bit more about the story of the film? So, the story. The story. Like, yeah. It's really based on the the uh, the experience of neuroscientists with with that kind of um, that kind of disorders, and she uns unsuspectedly uh, developed uh, um, a case of her own uh, uh, with a musical disorder. So um, she's being uh, the test, the subject of the experiment, and uh, um, and and compare that with the other character who has a, another peculiar relationship with uh, music, but expressed in whole different ways. And this is their relationship, basically. Have you already tested uh, all the technologies you're presenting there? And uh, did you make any experience with uh, laboratories or, or any other people? Actually, being from Montreal, um, this fits, and this makes sense because we are uh, Montreal host two of the world major uh, R and D centers based on musical disorders, the Brahms and Kermit. So I, for over a year, I experienced myself. I volunteer uh, to uh, that kind of test, and there's a really large variety of tests. I've did uh, some of them are web based. The others are you're uh, into an uh, anechoic room and you have, uh, you have to specialize uh, sound with a laser on your head and stuff like that. So I, I really wanted to be familiar with the technology in place and how it can be translated into a storytelling and uh, film environment. Are, are you involved with these two laboratories to, uh, to work on the project and to, to develop it with you? We're in talks with Brahms. And there's another, um, it's called Observatoire Recherche Création en Musique at the uh, University of Montreal. <laughs> um, and they are interested in that project as a e scientific experiment in itself uh, to see how music is, uh, uh, is creating emotion in the film context on screen. How is it used on screen? And this is part of the narrative. We want to question how sound is used by, by writers and filmmakers and music as well and film. So this is kind of an experiment for them. So we're looking to work for, with such people. Sorry, quick, quick question. Um, you said that the, the audience can change the, the soundtrack that they'd be listening to during the film. Yeah. Is that a decision made in the beginning of the film or is that while the film's going on you can uh, change between it's soundtracks? Like, it's like podcast, basically. So you, you're tuning which channel you want to and so it's... So you can, you can in one second listen to the one and then jump to the other one. So that's... A uh, no, uh, actually, because as I said, I don't want it to be intrusive. So you have to decide first, take a guess, and you have to watch the film again if you want to okay. have the other experience. Have you any clue of the budget of your project? I mean, from the very beginning until the, you know, the total finishing of the project, and what do you already have in your pocket? I mean, financing. Okay. Uh, film budget is three million. Canadian, uh, so 2.5 American, and the uh, for the every interactive component, it's around 
300,000 Canadian. So we already have uh, SADEC in place and development, and we're looking to apply for funding. We just started this project like um, a few months ago. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks a lot, congratulations. Um, before we continue, I wanted to, to tell you that um, uh, during the next days and today, obviously, you can meet at the, um, uh, the next pavilion uh, all these uh, creators, producers, to, uh, to come to meet them, to talk to them more in, uh, more in details. Uh, let's go on. <coughs> um, change the microphone, sorry. Um, so I'm very proud because now we, we're going to welcome um, a kind of premiere in the world. Uh, it's the presentation of the uh, new um, Ankama film uh, called Dofus. And we have the pleasure to welcome Frédéric Puech, the director of the animation uh, of Ankama, to present us. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Maybe we, uh, before we get started, actually, I'd like to show um, maybe the trailer of our film and let you know a little bit more about um, our film strategy. Teaser, please. Well, I hope I won't have to apologize for anything today. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, just a few words about Ankama. Ankama is a French company with the second largest gaming company. Uh, we are new to the feature film world, uh, but we are not new to animation. Uh, we started the company 10 years ago with our franchise called Dofus, which is an online game. Dofus has been uh, traveling the world uh, pretty impressively. Uh, we've had uh, over 60 million accounts open over the past 10 years. Uh, that means uh, uh, the game has been available in 150 uh, countries, nine languages. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, slide, please. Nine languages, and today about two and a half million uh, players have been, um, have been playing the game. Um, we, uh, one of our, sorry, just mixing up. So from, from online game, actually, the company went uh, into comic books. In, it went into animation. We created a Dofus uh, animation series. Uh, in 22, a strong merchandising program, which has been available in quite a few uh, countries. Um, most of all, actually, we are known, actually, for never telling the same story. And the Dofus film, actually, is uh, telling a new story. Just a few strong features about our film. Uh, uh, it's based actually on a strong and established uh, IP. Um, it's, it's actually a story that will speak to um, um, a large audience. Of course, our gaming, uh, uh, gaming audience, and, uh, which is based on, on teens and young adults. But it's mo most of all, actually, it's a kids and family film. It's a story which is accessible to all. Uh, you really don't actually need to be a player, a game player, um, to, be, uh, to engage into the film. And it's, uh, it's a story with strong characters. It's a story about uh, a young boy. It's an initiation story, um, comedy, adventure, and action. We have big ambitions, actually, for our first film. Uh, we also have uh, strong partners on the film. In France, uh, we have been teaming up with Jebeka, who is actually one of the leading uh, animation uh, feature film distributor. We uh, internationally, the film is represented by Indie Sales, which are here in Cannes actually to introduce the film for the first time. Uh, the film is co-produced uh, with France 3 Cinema and Pictanovo, which is a Northern Fund uh, film fund. In France alone, actually, we're looking at a, at a pretty massive release uh, over 350 copies and perhaps more, uh, with an ANP budget just for the French market of 4 million euro. It's a mistake. What, what's unique to our, what's unique actually to our, to our release plan? Um, Ankama is a, is a company which is known for transmedia. Transmedia is really part of our DNA. Uh, we, uh, we engage with our community online. Uh, we engage through our, with our community uh, through our merchandise uh, licensing program, uh, but also through our publishing division. Uh, 
But actually, one of our strengths, um, being a virtual world company, is to engage actually with our community uh, uh, in live events. Um, I don't know if a few of you are familiar with the comic book world or gaming world, uh, in the world of Comic Con. Uh, our plan actually is to uh, uh, preview the film and organize live events uh, all across France in cinemas, but also design an international concept, what we call the Dofus Days, where we bring under one roof and we'll be touring actually cinemas uh, uh, to meet with our community, uh, organizing contests, uh, organizing, getting them to engage actually with the creators of the show, with the comic books artists uh, that are behind the Dofus franchise, and of, of course going through uh, uh, film previews. So in short, actually, this is, uh, this is actually our first experience in, uh, in, uh, in releasing actually a feature film, uh, and one that's going to see a, really tr a truly transmedia uh, strategy behind, uh, behind the project. That's all. Thank you very much. Do you have, um, do you have some questions, maybe? Please. In which countries uh, are already uh, Dofus players right now? The, the community is pretty much around the world. Uh, right now we have two and a half million players that are playing at any given time. Uh, I would say our strongest uh, community is, uh, of course, the French-speaking community. So you're looking at France, Belgium, uh, you're looking at Switzerland, uh, Quebec. <laughs> It's, available, it's not available in Dutch right now. It's available in nine languages. Uh, it's actually, we've got a pretty strong uh, commu uh, community in the Benelux, uh, but actually in English language or French language. Uh, it's also extremely strong in Latin America. It's probably a second largest community uh, around the world, um, as well as in Russia and Eastern Europe. Uh, and do, 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 so, uh, do you plan to uh, adapt your community with the distribution of the film? Um, are you targeting the countries where you're strongest first? Well, we, we, ha we have really two angles, marketing-wise. Um, it's before all actually a great story. So I think we really want to put forward the story uh, before we actually put the strengths of the community. Obviously, we have the ability to uh, leverage our community uh, wherever we go, uh, and especially like Latin America, but also we have a growing community right now in Northern America, and uh, we we're playing actually through events uh, whether they're Comic-Con events with our community um, to actually spread the world about the film. Uh, the story of the movie, how close it is from the game? Okay. It's actually one, I would say, one of our, part of our strategy is to never actually tell the same stories. Um, so on every single media, whether it's a book, whether it's actually a game, whether actually it's the animation series, we, we tell a different story. We take the character, we spin them off, uh, and then build from there. Uh, the idea is really to try to provide a, a new experience, uh, especially on the storytelling, unveiling um, you know, new characters, uh, new plots. Um, just a question, you're one of the greatest um, um, video game studio in France. How do you become in such a short time um, animation studio? How do you make the change and the evolution? Well, we started with, with gaming, but our two creators, actually one is coming from gaming, the other one is actually coming from the graphic world. Uh, it was actually pretty natural for us, uh, you know, with a, a company that has transmedia uh, as a part of a strategy to really go across different platforms. So we started seven years ago as the animation studio. Uh, we've produced uh, three television series, three TV movies. Uh, our series have been exported now in over 100 countries. Uh, following the success of actually of our gaming IPs, uh, so for us it's actually it was an inch, um, a natural move actually to go to the big screen and tell a bigger story. Good. Um, is there any other question? May maybe we can ask uh, Malika if she has something to tell us. She's um, the uh, no, no, she doesn't want to. Just to just to ma ma maybe I'll tell a few uh, just one word. Ma Malika actually works for the Northern Film uh, Fund. Uh, we are based in Northern France, and we're very proud to have them as uh, co-producers. They're also actually very active in the interactive uh, world as a financier, a founder of, uh, of Transmedia World. Hello. Um, how do you plan to mix in terms of 
marketing, the community or the audience of the gameplay of the game and the, the movies. Did you plan to, to mix this? Uh well, it, it's obviously a big, like just take the, the, the example of France. So we've started actually leveraging uh, our, our in-gaming community uh, right now, uh, basically creating new zones, uh, creating contests online, um, giving them the opportunity uh, to also interact in some ways with the film. Our gaming world is organized by leagues. So we have a competition between the leagues, the, the player leagues, and they'll have uh, their blazon actually at the end of the, of the film for those that have actually have been uh, communicating the more on the, on the project. And obviously next to this, we have a more traditional approach um, to marketing, you know, in terms of advertising. Uh, but our idea is really to try to get everyone to meet uh, through our, our live events which will happen across France starting from November all the way to the launch of the film in February. Uh, it's very important for us to see, uh, for, for the non-community, uh, I would say non-fans, uh, to see actually the uh, level of engagement with our world. And, uh, and we, feel, we feel actually we're going to make a lot of new fans this way. So you plan also to create some, some, new, um, some new gamers thanks to the film? Is, uh, is that it, the idea It too? could be, but it's not the only objective. Uh, but it could, it could be, but it's not the only objective. We have, our, uh, we have a lot of, like, we sold, like, uh, close to 2 million uh, uh, comic books in France, and I don't think all of our comic book uh, readers are, are players. It's really, uh, it's a world, actually, that has, uh, uh, you know, that could um, engage with a lot, uh, actually a pretty large um, uh, community, but it's not necessarily gaming-focused. But do, do you... That's what I want to say. Do, do you make, in terms of marketing and big data, do you, do you try to anal uh, analyze... Well, we, we know where our gamers are and, and definitely we'll go where, uh, you know, we'll put a strong focus where the gamers are, uh, you know, in terms of cities, uh, uh, in terms of interaction. Uh, but, the, but the strategy, uh, the marketing strategy, not just built on gamers. Uh, obviously, we feel we have a very strong story. Uh, the uh, quality of the film I is very high, like all of our, actually all the productions that we do. And, uh, and we feel that's going to bring actually a total new audience that have never heard of the, uh, of the game of the, uh, or the Dofus brands before. How many countries um, do you have sold already the, the, the film for distribution? The, the film actually is, is uh, just been released in Cannes for the first time. So what you've seen here is what most people have seen so far. And we only are showing uh, the, first, uh, the first part of the film right now. So it's, it's pre-sales. Uh, and indie sales are just starting to uh, uh, add it up to their lineup. So if somebody wants to buy it for a country, they can, they can get to you and, and start discussion? Yes, with me or actually with the, uh, the indie sales team. We are actually our international okay. uh, distributor. Indie sales have their suites at the Grand uh, Residence here. Hi, hello. Good. Is that working? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you've got three films, and I was wondering what the, what the deal was with the other two films. Are you already planning those, or are you waiting to see how this one does? And um, secondly, you might have already said this, but um, are you teasing the film in the game? And have you already started doing that? Yeah, yes, we actually are teasing. Well, that was the last uh, part of the question. Yes, we have started actually to tease uh, the film uh, with our gaming community, uh, especially on the French market and then internationally. Um, and then uh, we do have actually bigger ambitions at the Dofus film. We have a second film called Mutafukas, which is right uh, now in production probably for release in 2017, uh, which is actually targeting uh, a slightly different demo, um, uh, older, uh, adult, more adult uh, type of demographic. Um, and, and you do have a third project, but that's, uh, right now we're focusing on those two projects. So Dofus for this year, uh, and release next year, um, and Mutafukas, um, which is uh, based actually on one of the comic books we've been publishing. Sorry, what was, this, what was the second project called? Mutafukas. <laughs> it actually takes place uh, it's, uh, in, in New Mexico. It's, uh, it's uh, definitely a more of an adult project. Hmm. Good. Any other, any other question? Thank you very much. We are very honored and proud to welcome you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So let's continue and, and, and conclude with the... Uh, Last and, and beautiful project, um, it's called Gringo, and it's presented by uh, Torsten Gauger uh, from Gauger Film. And uh, please. Hello. Um, 
Boundaries are important for children and for kids, but sometimes uh, the only importance of boundaries lies in overcoming them. Here we see a picture uh, of uh, South America, and this is, uh, well, in the north we see the rich houses, and in the south we see the poor houses of the favelas. And um, if we uh, look at this picture, for example, it's more obvious, where in very small places there comes the differences between the first world, the second world, or the third world. And um, uh, this project uh, was born in the, at the uh, Academy for Child Media in uh, Erfurt in Germany and uh, was developed as a, a cinema project, but uh, now I will talk about the, more about the transmedia part of it. And um, uh, if we see here, uh, we asked the children um, at schools in, uh, in Germany what are uh, impressive um, things for, um, uh, for borders and here for uh, boundaries? And here we have one, uh, one picture, a uh, true picture from Sao Paulo, where the gated communities live in a completely separate world. And here, for example, we see the um, picture like more, I was living when I was uh, living in Colombia. Um, we had gunmen on our ground to protect, um, uh, well, ourselves. And it's, uh, it's crazy because you live in your own uh, uh, world without contact um, to uh, other places. And um, so um, we made a transmedia part. Uh, one is the first thing is the feature film I will talk about. The second one is an exchange and distribution platform for children. The third are um, games. And the fourth is a graphic novel. If I start with the uh, um, exchanging and distribution platform, we had the idea that um, children could um, put their um, uh, pictures of their own life um, in a platform, and you can uh, and the children can uh, guess where are the um, uh, children coming from. So you see only the pictures of the shoes or of the food or uh, of the school or of the pen or something like that. S very simple things and, the, uh, and you have um, different pictures of the, uh, of the uh, normal life things and you can guess where, um, which pictures belong together and which not. And uh, for this part, for example, um, well, this is here, uh, how could uh, be um, life from children or um, this year play, uh, playing, going around on the street, having fun. These ones are from um, Brazil, but um, our uh, aim is to find um, partners from all over the world and to create one platform wh where the children from different worlds can find um, um, way to communicate via pictures and not, uh, um, well, it's very easy, a very easy uh, content and um, it could be, I think, very, um, very funny. Here we have um, well, the different worlds we are creating for the, um, for the world of the um, um, feature film and also for the graphic novel. Um, here are the four bases of our story. For example, if we, uh, if we go to the games, um, uh, one thing the children told us that they love the, the picture or they, it's a kind of love and fear of the walls. So get away the walls, get away the things that are between children if they want to play. So one uh, thing is in uh, browser games to uh, have games who are uh, kicking the walls down. Uh, the other thing are the graphic novels, where each character, we are three characters, and each character represents one world, and um, they have small little uh, well, um, abilities, and we begin with uh, uh, Carla, who is a streetwise girl living in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, and uh, then we go step by step to the other uh, characters. If we uh, go to the feature film, the feature film um, tells a story 
about uh, three kids. It's uh, Bjorn 12, Fernando 12, Carla 11, and they live wall by wall uh, in um, Rio de Janeiro without having any contact with each other. And um, Bjorn is a, a German guy com coming from Europe. Uh, the, uh, parents are very uh, stiff um, Bavarians, uh, and um, they come there, and he's not allowed to play with the other guy on the other side of the wall, who's Fernando, um, because the father thinks, this is a very rich guy, I think he is from the mafia, so you're not allowed to play with him, but because from a German kind of perspective, if there is a rich guy in Brazil, must be from mafia. So uh, it's a bit, uh, well, so, so the two guys begin to play with the football, it goes about, uh, begins to play uh, over the wall, and um, the guys don't like each other, and they began to play pranks. And by playing pranks with each other, the pranks go harder and harder, and um, Bjorn gets control of the house of Fernando by the computer system, and um, heats up the uh, house and uh, gets out the water of the pool and opens the front door. And at that moment, the little brother of Fernando disappears, and the two guys are forced now to go out of the secure area of the gated communities, out, um, this is Björn, and um, this is the world of uh, Fernando, and they have to go out, well, it's uh, our characters, yes, I know, it's, okay, and um, this is uh, little Carla, also nominated for an Oscar, so it's, <laughs> that's the kind uh, we work. And, um, no, they, uh, they find on the way out of the secure space of the gated community, they find these little streetwise Carla, and together they force to bring the little Ronaldo back um, to the safe spaces. And on this journey, they go through the favelas, through the, uh, through the jungle of the um, surrounding Rio, and, um, and uh, at, the f uh, at the beginning, they know what it means to be real friends, to um, be a team, to be strong together, and to have the, f uh, the power of the different abilities they have and the different knowledges they have. And at the moment, um, we have uh, different, well, this is some kind of a style and mood board we are planning. And um, we have different partners from Brazil. We have from Portugal, a co-production partner. We, were, we have, um, uh, uh, whereby uh, Creative Europe has funded us for development. It was developed at the Academy for Kindermedien. And uh, now we're planning the next steps. Thank you very much. Um, is there any any starting question from the from the audience? I'm 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 start with the question. You are you dealing with the Brazilian, Portugal, and German co-production? Yes. Not easy. Not so easy. Explain <laughs> us how you do that and how you do that on a digital. Uh, Yes. Yes. Um, well, I'm. I was born in Brazil, so for me as a German, uh, having there this link is uh, is pretty easy. We have a um, partner in uh, Portugal who's special, uh, specialized in co-productions between Europe and Latin America, and uh, speaks all the uh, the languages. It will be shot in English uh, for an international audience. But uh, these uh, three uh, co-producers are the basis for uh, for the project. Yes. You, you you explain you want the project to be um, educative, to be yes. uh, to to give education and to be a tool for that. How do you how do you imagine to uh, to make this purpose uh, active and efficient? Um, well, we want to make it very easy. So to make pictures with a handy, it's uh, for, with a mobile phone, it's most simple thing. And so uh, the different worlds of of children, they all live in. First, uh, the, the, w the worlds of the children are changing year by year. First is the only the one room, then begins the living room, and uh, then the house, then the quarter, and so on. We want to help them to have an idea that there are other worlds of children, and to understand that the bases of the children always are the same. They want to have their family, they want to have their food, they want to have their friends. 
So it's, um, it's an, uh, a simple story to uh, uh, communicate via uh, this platform and for that we are uh, searching for partners uh, because we have not found something similar like that and we need partners in different countries and are searching for that. What, what kind of partners will, would they be? Um, partners who are specialized in uh, kids' content, um, of could be uh, uh, broadcasting uh, companies, could be uh, gaming companies and so on, who are based in special territories. But mostly to finance or also to, to no, create no, part to, of the Yes, to, to, to be part of, uh, of the process and to, um, to build it up. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, what, what are the next step of the project? What, what are you going for now in the next, uh, in the next weeks, month? Um, well, the next step is uh, in August I will be in Brazil. And, uh, well, we are in, in development uh, at the moment still, and uh, we are still finding partners. So um, with all these different p um, um, parts of the transmedia story, you always have to adapt um, points, and uh, that's... Uh, our uh, yes, our goals for the next months. Okay, thank you very much. Thank um, you. I, I would like to invite all the peaches to come up uh, back on the scene, please. Um, we um, we are a little bit anticipating and yes, please, all of you um, to thank you very much. Maybe we have an, another range of of questions uh, for them from the audience. And if not, I would like really much to, uh, to thank all of you for, um, for your creativity, for your innovation, and for, for being the future of the movie industry. So thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions from the audience? Okay, thanks all to be here, and, um, and have a nice day. Thank you very much.